From the bareness of a gymnasium to the personality-charged atmosphere of a cottage at Wargrave-on-Thames, home of the most famous child photographer of the century, Marcus Adams. Today, in his 82nd year, the grand old man is earning acclaim in a new sphere as a creator of a refreshingly simple yet stimulating art form, picture designs impressed flowers and plants. The pressing of flowers is not, of course, something new. In the Victorian era, particularly, it was a popular pastime. But it has taken the artistry of Marcus Adams to develop the practice into an art where imagination and the knowledge of harmony of shapes and colors is essential. It is, on the other hand, a hobby that many people might well take up and gain considerable satisfaction from. And, of course, there's no great expense involved. Adams himself, although he has only recently had the time to spare for this work, has always been interested in wildlife and has built up over a period of many years a collection of literally millions of delicate fragments, flowers, plants, leaves and even roots, all neatly and systematically filed away here. Invaluable when one realizes the importance of the color values in a pattern. For example, the color of a leaf can vary so much that a single replacement from the file can change the whole effect. Notice that apart from the backing, there is no artificial colouring at all in these pictures by Adams, and whether representative or abstract in theme, the vivid effect is achieved only by the artist's instinctive flair, and, just as important, endless patience. Marcus Adams is, of course, famous for his child portraits of the royal family. But few people know that he started his career as a painter, only becoming a specialist in child photography when he recognized the medium's potential for recapturing the expressions of children. But in arrangements like these, his early instruction as a painter becomes evident. If you're thinking of trying your hand, it's useful to know you press the plants between sheets of blotting paper. While to preserve the natural color, the blotting paper should first be soaked in weak oxalic acid. What your efforts will look like, we don't know. But it's certainly true to say that Marcus Adams has given us something quite out of the ordinary and very beautiful. <laughs> 